What's up guys? The quiver looks a little different. So we got a few larger boards going on here and uh, let's talk about them. So this year I got into sup surfing. I took a real deep dive into it. I started off by testing out, trying to paddle and balance and just do a little bit of stand up paddle boarding on an inflatable uh, stand up paddle board, an ISUP. And while they're okay, uh, it's a cheap way to get into the hobby, into the recreational activity. They plain, I'll put it bluntly, they suck for surfing. There's just no way around it. They're just not very good. Just because of how buoyant they are, they absorb every little tiny bump, rough water, and it's really hard to balance on an inflatable paddle board uh, out in the waves. They just are. Compared to a hard board, hands down, there's no comparison. The board on the bottom here, the yellow and white one, I built this one earlier this summer. I did a build video for it, so if you haven't checked that out, go check that out if you're interested. Uh, I didn't go super in depth in it, but I just kind of went through my build process and my, my, uh, my theory around it. Which then after surfing it for a bit, which I made it very thick, wide, um, I didn't really base it on any real design, I kind of just came with, up with it uh, on the fly. It surfs really well, it's super stable. It's only eight feet long, but yet uh, I was able to surf it no problem. And it's a blast. It, I really, really enjoy sub surfing. So I figured I need something a little bit smaller, a little bit with thinner rails. So I decided to make this board. So I put a real rush build on this one so I'd have it ready. Uh, if you're interested in seeing kind of the construction of this, and I am going to talk about this board, that's what this video is really about. Uh, go over on my Instagram and check out, uh, I have posted a highlight of my stories. I was posting this uh, as I was building it as a story. So you'll be able to check out all of those uh, pictures, um, just be building this along. And there seems to be a helicopter flying overhead which keeps interrupting me while I record this audio. Let's talk about the design of the Surf Sup. I based the design off of the Starboard line of Pro Surf Sups, although I did make mine a little bit thicker, but the overall shape is based off of uh, those designs. So if you go check out their website, you kind of get a sense of what I based this design off of. The dimensions of this board are seven foot, six inches by 30 inches by four and five eighths thick. In hindsight now, I probably would have liked to actually have made it even thinner but I didn't want to go too thin because I wanted to still be able to, because I am learning, I still want to be able to stand up on this board and not have it to be too, you know, tippy. But after uh, standing on this and surfing this a little bit, I could definitely go thinner. So that's the beautiful thing about making your own boards um, because the price of a, to buy a comparable board like this is, well, several thousand dollars or at least above a thousand dollars. And you know, it's hard to get a feel unless you can go out and try a few different boards to see what works for you. Now, fortunately for me, I have the luxury of building my own boards. If you guys are watching this, it's probably you guys can build your own board as well. I would err on the side of making them thicker than thinner personally, because it's hard to learn on something that's really tippy or thinner that doesn't have as much volume. It'll probably set you back in your progression. But I am not an expert in stand up paddle board surfing or surfing for that matter. I'm just decently good at building things, which translates well to making surfboards. So that's why I'm kind of sharing my knowledge with you guys. And it's just a hobby or passion that I really enjoy. Okay, enough about that tangent. Back to this board. Um, the nose is pulled in more than the yellow board, as you can see. So it is going to be inherently a little less stable. Same with the tail, it is pulled in a little bit. The rails are also thinner. I did the rail bands to be like, um, I forget what the rail bands were, but they're definitely more like a medium type of rail as opposed to a full rail. It's not a completely like knifey rail or really thin rail like you'd find on a short board. It's got a swallow tail in the back. Yeah, and a pointy nose in the front. So when you're surfing it, you know, that pulled in nose and tail 
uh, it just helps fit in the pocket of the wave better. It serves better uh, for turning and just maneuvers and just plain swing weight because the nose isn't as big as say the yellow board. You just got less volume to have to swing the nose back and forth. So, you know, it's Newton's third law of motion. The fin setup on this board is a quad. That is my uh, kind of testing out riding it as a quad. I really like that. It's a little looser. It doesn't track as well as say like something with a, uh, with a two plus one or a large single fin, but uh, it's totally controllable. And a board this short with a quad setup does make this board a little bit more um, pivoty when you're paddling. So it, it tends not to track in a straight line very easily. So you do have to adjust for that. It also has a decent amount of rocker in this, but of course with the additional rocker, it doesn't paddle as fast as say, um, as the yellow board or a board that has a, a flatter rocker. So a little compromise there, maneuverability versus speed. All right, let's talk about the construction of this board. The materials for this board, it is made out of uh, EPS foam which is uh, kind of my preferred go-to foam now. Uh, I had made boards previously with XPS, but uh, EPS foam is uh, just something it's easy to work with and it plays well with epoxy. Also, it's easy to get. So I actually built this out of construction foam just like I did with the yellow board. It is 1.5 pounds per cubic foot and I have learned quite a bit in terms of sub-construction, it is very different than say making a regular surfboard. A regular surfboard, you tend to err on denser foam because there's not as much volume in a regular surfboard unless you're making like a really big long board or something. So you can get away with a denser foam with a lighting, lighter glassing schedule. So usually you wanna go like two pounds per cubic foot um, EPS foam for more like regular surfboards like back there, like my fish or the um, kind of the, the retro egg shape back there. I did make a stand-up paddle board for my uh, hydrofoil and that foil board was incredibly heavy. And my mistake for that was I used two pounds per cubic foot thinking that I should make it really dense because uh, it's strong. You're gonna have a foil attached to that. But having said that, now doing some research and now understanding why they use lighter foams is they use lighter foams, but they use other construction techniques to make stand-up paddle boards lighter and uh, foil boards as well. Uh, or else you're just going to end up with a big block of foam, which is heavier and you don't really need it. You can get away with these larger boards with the less denser foam. So 1.5 pounds per cubic foot is uh, is what these stand-up paddle boards are made out of. That is a little bit of a difference in construction, whereas all of the construction techniques for making a surfboard applies to making a stand-up paddle board. It's just that stand-up paddle boards are bigger. So uh, a couple other things to factor in. Uh, I added extra vent plugs into a board like this because there is a large volume of EPS foam here, so it is good to, and vents are inexpensive, it's cheap insurance, so that way you don't get any weird delaminations should the, there be big temperature variations um, with the foam heating up and then the air expanding, and then putting pressure on your, on your glassing job, which will end up with, uh, yeah, it can bubble on you, which has happened to me before. So lesson learned, I always vent my surfboards, and, or well, in this case, paddle boards. Now I did delete the stringer in this. As you can see, there's no stringer in this board whatsoever, except for there is a carbon fiber uh, reinforcement tape on the bottom of the board, which helps with um, stiffening up the board a little bit. To be perfectly honest, I think it's not really necessary because when you're going above, you know, three and a half inches, four inches for a board, the, the, the rigidity of the EPS foam is probably sufficient enough to not require a stringer or even reinforcement with carbon fiber. I did put the carbon fiber in because it looks cool, which is kind of cool anyways, I thought it was neat, but it does add rigidity and it's not expensive to add that. Your mileage may vary. It really depends on uh, maybe how hard you're gonna be surfing the board and how much flex you want in it. You, that really will play into the design of the board. But in this case, 
uh, I put a piece of carbon fiber on the bottom and I also put two carbon fiber patches at the tail. In hindsight now, they probably really weren't necessary because I did thin out the back a little bit, but it's not so thin that you really need the carbon fiber. The fiberglass uh, would have been more than sufficient, but it does look cool. So I kind of like that. And the last thing I'll talk about in terms of construction is I did make this board with all completely out of e-glass. It, the glassing schedule is six ounce on the bottom. And of course, because this is a stand-up paddleboard, you need to buy glass that is specifically wider for stand-up paddleboards. Again, I get all my supplies from Greenlight Surf Supply. Go check them out. So back to the glassing schedule, six ounce on the bottom. The deck has two layers of six ounce with one of them wrapping all the way around the rails. And then I have right about here where I stand, where my knees or my feet are going to impact this board the most, I have a patch right here as well of six ounce. So I have total 18 ounces total in the center here, and then 12 ounces of glass uh, on the rest of the deck, uh, including the tail and the nose. And so far, seems plenty durable. It has two seal coats, or one hot coat, one gloss coat, using the old school terminology, uh, even though this is epoxy. The only thing I did a little slightly different, and also thank you to James, who uh, gave me a little piece of Enegra to work on, to kind of test out and play with. And I've never played with it, I've always wanted to play with it. What's great about that composite material, uh, I believe it's polypropylene it's made out of, but it's really great for laminating into your boards or whatever projects you might have. It helps add impact resistance and uh, durability, which of course for the rails would really be nice. And I might incorporate that uh, into future builds. I included the Enegra just on the nose here because I only had a, a small patch that I could laminate in and it was perfect for the nose and it has a really cool looking weave that you can kind of see, especially if you were to do it with a tint job, you could totally see it. And a note about working with Enegra is it is very, uh, it doesn't like to hold its shape. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. It's, uh, it'll be interesting when I get more of it because uh, I do plan on ordering some and trying to maybe laminate it on the deck to hopefully maybe get away with a lighter glassing schedule to save weight. Um, we'll see. So the yellow board weighs, uh, I forget now, but it's 20 some pounds. So it's a hefty boy. This board here weighs 19 pounds. So I was able to keep the weight down on this board, which also makes a big difference for the swing weight. It's also way easier to carry it from the car to the surf when it's a couple pounds lighter, because uh, yeah, if you gotta walk a long distance, you know, it might not be that heavy, but it adds up after a while. And also because I used um, Greenlight Surf Supplies uh, Marine Grade Epoxy, which I did a video uh, previously, just on the seal coat, I didn't have to sand it, just I had to sand the rails and the tail um, for the, the tape line, but just this like I can't believe how self-leveling that epoxy is. So again, go check out that, uh, that epoxy and check out my other video around that as well. But uh, I saved a ton of time. So speaking of time, to build this board took me just under 30 hours. I think it was 28 hours to build this board. So it was a pretty quick build. Um, and that's factoring also cleanup and everything as well. Uh, cost to build this board, I estimate it to be uh, I didn't keep track this time, but I would say probably anywhere from three to three to four hundred dollars. Whereas comparable, if you were to buy a board like this, although they're probably using more carbon fiber and different constructions, this board would probably a board like this would probably set you back well over probably fourteen fifteen hundred dollars. But yeah, so I think that's it about construction. Uh, I'll just mention, you know, I put five fin boxes in it for the quad, the uh, a regular USA style box uh, in case I want to put a larger single fin in the back or switch it over to a thruster. It uh, has two vent plugs, a handle here, dual leash plugs. So that way, uh, you know, board this size just eliminates the strain off of just one leash plug. And uh, yeah, I have this nice EVA grip deck here that I got off AliExpress. I have. You'll notice that it's three pieces. 
uh, because I ran out and I'm still waiting on an order for uh, larger sheets, but I had pieces left over from, uh, from other projects. And also on the back, I put a kick pad, a tail kick pad back there, uh, which is really nice. I like that I can put my back foot back there and surf off the tail of this board. And I know where my foot is when it lands on that little bump in the back. So that's really handy. Again, AliExpress, really inexpensive. I think it was only like 15 bucks. All right, and the last thing I will talk about is how does it surf? How does it paddle? Uh, my impressions of stand-up paddle boarding, uh, the future. Well, uh, number one, I love stand-up paddle boarding. Uh, I love surfing, but stand-up paddle boarding has opened up the whole bunch of possibilities when the waves aren't wonderful. Uh, I can get out there and paddle into like really crappy waves and still have a lot of fun. Or if it's completely flat, I can still get out and just paddle around and just enjoy uh, the nice weather when, uh, when it's warm or the warm water, which doesn't happen that often here, but it's still nice. Secondly, it's also a really great workout. That is like a real big plus, I have to say. So uh, uh, big thumbs up for stand-up paddleboarding for helping getting in shape. Uh, I'm when I'm out in the lineup and it's generally not that busy where unless there's like, you know, a hurricane or something People have been pretty friendly about stand-up paddleboard surfing. Just gotta be friendly about it You know, there's always there's always that issue around maybe a little bit of animosity between uh, Stand-up paddleboard surfers and regular surfers. I just kind of like being in the water I don't really care what type of craft it is. Uh, I've been out with I've talked to some people who uh, kayak in the surf and I've also talked to some people who uh, use some of those what do they call them uh, surf skis I think and uh, those look incredibly fun too so I don't really care as long as you're out there having fun doesn't matter to me surf whatever you want it's a free ocean just be polite don't be an ass you know just like everything else in life all right coming back from that tangent this board surfs really well the quad setup on it is really nice it uh, it's a lot looser than my two plus one setup uh, on my yellow board not to mention of course this is a, a smaller board having said that though surfing a quad quads are fun my fish is a quad back there it's just nice and loose it's easy to kind of whip it around when the surf is decent i have a little bit of footage of me surfing this but i generally try not to take my camera out a ton because i tend to obsessive about trying to get a shot or messing around with the camera so it, it kind of detracts from the fun of going surfing i have had this board out in knee-high surf it surfs great uh up to waist high no problems and i have had it up to shoulder high uh and yeah this this board maneuvers great it's just a blast it's so easy to get into the waves because you got the paddle to really help drive you into the wave uh, it's such a difference than just being prone surfing where you're limited that if you don't get up on the wave You you miss that window of opportunity to get down and get your bottom turn in Whereas this you can give it a few extra paddles to get that speed up to drop down to get right down into the face of the wave I don't want to say that Sub surfing makes it almost too easy to get up onto a wave But you do have that advantage of the power uh, of the paddle and the size of the paddle compared to say you know, your two hands, which are only this big to paddle, whereas as a paddle, you know, you have so much more surface area to really impart that energy to get moving. And it's really important that uh, you want a paddle to get a ton of cadence to get moving. So you want a lot of RPMs, a lot of strokes to get you moving uh, to get into that wave. This board really doesn't paddle straight because it's so short and not having a big center fin in this, it doesn't track particularly well. Having said that though, it turns really well. So when you wanna turn really quickly to catch a wave, this thing's you know awesome for that. It whips around, especially if you do a pivot turn on this, you barely even have to put your back foot back and to put weight in the back and then to, to do that quick pivot turn on a stand-up paddle board. But one thing is you really have to know how to do what they call, can't remember exactly what it's called, if it's called a C stroke. But anyways, it's the stroke, you, when you're paddling, if you're standing on the board here, you put your paddle out here and then you paddle inward because it helps course correct for the natural tendency for the board to yaw to the left if you're paddling on your right hand side. 
or you can also do what they call a J stroke, which is uh, I think terminology for maybe kayaking, no, uh, canoeing, sorry. And where you kind of, you come back and then you finish off with like a stroke where you whip it out at the back with uh, like a J and then it, it pulls the nose back this way. I personally prefer, I don't know if it's like the half C stroke where I reach out and I paddle inward like this. I just find that works the best for me and I can get the highest cadence uh, to start paddling for a wave. So yeah, that's, uh, that's really great. And of course, I've also learned the hard way that uh, don't do parallel stance when you're surf, uh, subsurfing. Always stand in a modified surf stance or even surf stance with your feet staggered. You can just handle the bumps of the waves a lot better. And one last thing, you might notice that the rails of these two boards have like basically duct tape on them. They're not, it's not really duct tape, it's actually Gorilla Tape. Uh, it's easy to apply and remove and it's super durable. Uh, instead of using rail tape that you can buy the clear stuff, which doesn't technically add a ton of protection, I found Gorilla Tape works really well. And uh, I cut it in such a way with this or bright orange stuff that it actually looks semi-decent. But I care more about how well uh, keeping my board in one piece than I do necessarily around the aesthetics of the board. I shouldn't say that because you do want your board to look kind of cool. You don't want it to look like total crap. But having said that, I cut and taped the rails in such a way that it looks uh, at least somewhat presentable. And at least with the orange one here, I think it adds a nice you know, strip, a nice highlight to it. Call it a racing stripe. So I think I will end the video here. Uh, upcoming videos for builds will be, I still have to edit a video for the foil board that I built. Uh, the stand-up paddle foil board and I also um, have some stuff on order and I plan on making in the fall in the winter the coming winter a couple other stand-up paddle boards probably maybe a really long one so uh, I'll be able to get out there maybe do some downwinding catch some bumps that sounds like it'll be a lot of fun really interesting especially when the surf isn't really cooperating so yeah i really highly recommend stand up paddleboard surfing if you just want to get out there in the water and just maximize your time out there when the surf is down all right i'm gonna end the video here i hope you guys enjoyed uh, my little ramble and my thought process of designing this board i thought i would share it with you guys even though i didn't do a build for this again go over and check out my instagram uh, highlight story where i have all the photos of this board uh, post it there if you're interested and uh, I'll probably post more projects over on Instagram uh, depending on the complexity if they're more complex or I have value to add I'll post it on my main channel here and if not I'll just post some stuff over on my Instagram stories or my regular feed so thank you so much for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, leave a comment down below I'm curious about your thoughts around stand the paddleboard surfing or maybe what projects you're working on a few of you have sent me some really nice messages in the last few months uh, with pictures of some of the boards you've built uh, i really enjoy seeing them thanks so much uh, it just it's really interesting to see the community that has kind of uh, built up around this channel uh, on surfing so thanks so much for watching thank you guys oh and i also broke 100,000 subscribers so that's really cool uh, just collecting them from various different projects because this pro this channel isn't specifically just for surfing but thank you guys for helping me reach that milestone uh, that's so cool uh, I should get around to maybe making a video about uh, the play button as well maybe I'll do something interesting for that anyways thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video